Right. So today what we will do is, <coughs> we'll discuss how this network setup looks like and how you can plan your network topology and all, and where we are yesterday. come back to here this is, <coughs> this is what we are discussing yesterday right so how you can manage your VPC uh, first of all let's understand what is VPC and how you can create and manage VPC based on your business requirement that will be either class A or class B or class C IP addressing if you want to adopt also, we'll see how you have you can connect to the devices uh, over the internet if you don't have the side to side VPN and stuff. If you are a beginner and you want to do some practice, this will show all these things today. of all, I want to understand what is VPC. Anyone? Okay, so <clears throat> imagine I want to create one VPC and place some devices in inside the VPC. I want to access it. That is the aim for today. Okay, so what all things that I need to consider in order to create? First of all, I log into the portal, and you see now you are going to deploy your workloads in East US one, US East one, which is in North Virginia. Okay, so if you want to deploy your resources somewhere else, you can simply select that particular location. And it will automatically redirect to that URL. Okay, so I'll go back and set to default. Now, if you go to AWS Management Console, scroll down, networking and content delivery, you see VPC. <coughs> to my VPCs. Delete the existing ones. I've deleted everything. It's nothing empty. Okay. So first of all, let's understand what is VPC. PC lets you provision a logically isolated section of AWS, <coughs> AWS cloud where you can launch your AWS resources in a virtual network that you define. Means simply understand our region. In which region we are deploying the resources? US East Virginia. US East one. Okay. So in this location, <coughs> you are trying to deploy some of your workloads or some of your servers. Okay, some of your applications. So what VPC will do? VPC will create a logical boundary for your work. Isolated, logically isolated section means it will create one logical boundary. Now 
Now you create logical boundary. Just define one VPC. the name you can give east us production bpc1 <coughs> okay and this logical boundary must contain one of the ip range from any of these classes means what you can either give class a private IP range, class B private IP range, or class C private IP range. So which IP range will give? In this example we'll try to give 10 dot. Let's understand what is this. What is this slash 16? I'll explain later. But for now remember I'm just creating 10.100 slash 16 which gives you around 60,000 IP addresses. Okay, and you have to imagine in such a way that your VPC is spread across. Your VPC is spread across. Multiple regions. What I explained yesterday. Don't forget. Sorry. Multiple availability zones. My bad. Within a region, you have a zones. So, once you create a VPC, same VPC it is spread across all the zones. In order to create zone specific VPC, you have a six zones in East US. Your logical boundary is spread across all the zones. Okay, so how to create a VPC? Let's see. Go back to portal, your VPC, and create a VPC. What is the name? East US underscore production VPC. <coughs> IP4C IDR into production. 10.1.0.0 slash 16. You, you want IPv6? No, I don't require. Nothing to create. And what is this tenancy? Let's understand. You can run instance in your VPC on a single tenant. Dedicated hardware. Select a dedicated to ensure the instance is launched in this VPC are dedicated tenancy instances regardless of the tenancy attribute specified at the launch. Select default to ensure that instance launch in this VPC. Use the tenancy attribute specified in the launch. Means what? If you say selected tenancy means you have created a logical boundary and you are trying to place some of your workloads inside your VPC where they will go and save the workloads. Let's say, for example, I created a logical boundary and I created one VM. Okay, what is this VM by the way? What is this VM? Virtual machine and uh, VPC. Set up, files. Set up files, right? And that will go and save somewhere in the physical hardware. Okay, so if you say dedicated tenancy, means you can select your, you can run your instances in your VPC on a single tenant on dedicated hardware. So that instance placement will be decided if you set if you select the tenancy. Okay, I'll leave it to default. 
create. So your VPC has been created. Okay. VPC ID and decider. DNS resolution by default enabled. DNS host names not enabled. Okay. And network ACL created, ACP created, route table created. So by default, you will see a couple of things got created. And we are not going to use the default ones for the route table and, and ACLs and stuff, but we'll we'll customize as per our requirement later on. So here what I need, I need host name for each and every workload which I deploy. So for that what I need to do, right click to VPC edit DNS host names and enable it. <coughs> what happens? Every work every virtual machine that you are going to deploy inside that VPC, it will be associated with one of the host name by default. If you enable this option. Close. Okay. So let's understand before we proceed with the other steps let's understand what is this cider block how many ips you'll get here what is this slash 16 okay let me open excel for this Let's do one thing. You have an IP range like this, and you are not able to understand what it is. Okay, do one thing. Take this IP address and start with slash slash twenty four. Slash 24 means how many IP addresses? Hello? Slash 24 subnet. Everyone knows? 254. 0 to 255 exclude 0 and 255 you will get 254 IP addresses if you are using slash 24. <coughs> take this as a benchmark I mean easy way to remember so if you keep on decreasing your if you keep on decreasing your this digit okay what happens It will keep on increasing into two. If I give slash twenty two, into two. Okay. If I give slash twenty one, you will get two thousand IP addresses. If I give slash twenty. <clears throat> able to understand or I'm just <clears throat> creating more confusion or what 8000 18 if I give slash 17 you get 32,000 IP addresses and if I give slash 16 65,000 this is how it will grow. If I give further down slash 23, sorry, slash 25, it will not be like this. Okay, so what I will do, I will do 17 divided by 2.
Is something I'm still confused. It's yeah. clear. Remembering this is easy. Yes, yes. Okay. So every time people will use the subnets slash 24. So if you keep if you want to decide <coughs> how many IPs that you want to assign it to that logical boundary. So now I have created one logical boundary. I have assigned slash 16 means how many IPs are IP addresses that I have assigned to this boundary <coughs> these many 65,024 okay from where to where it starts so it starts with this and ends with search This is the VPC range that I have defined. Clear this part? Any questions? Okay. <coughs> now, imagine you have of land okay to construct the building are you going to construct single room like this or you are planning something different as per your taste or something okay if you construct a single big building that is not the building, it's a call it as a shed. Right? So if you further divide your plot into rooms, how you want to divide. And when it comes to IT, let's say you have a scope of 65,000 devices to place. Okay. You are to place 65,000 devices here it's fine okay but if someone came inside to attack you are exposing all 65,000 okay and if you want to further secure your workloads within this boundary what we will do is we will create some of these subnets Call it as a subnet. Subnets are part of VPC or subset of VPC. Means you need to define subnets within the VPC boundary. So let's say if this is your VPC, you need to play with any of these ranges in order to create the subnet. So basically, will start using the subnets based on the requirement if there is a requirement you need only 32 32 IPs for a specific reason or maybe for a specific application you need a dedicated 32 IPs that's it you don't require any more so you can create subnet with slash 27 I'll show you how to create different subnets with different <clears throat> boundaries okay and what is the reason what is the reason for creating these subnets any guess no idea imagine you have a 3 tier application it contains
three different types of or three different kinds of VM. Web VM, or let's say you have two virtual machines in this scope. <coughs> These two machines have some application where they will get the data from internet. This is basic functionality of this web server. Web server, what it will do? Some users or some of the customers, they will access the website over internet. Means, whatever the request that these two servers are receiving, they must be receiving from internet. Fine. And once the request is received, there is some application in the backend which can process those requests and help help the customers. So the request will be further routed to application servers. Once request came to application server, the application does, server doesn't hold any data. So application server want to fetch some of the data from database. What it will do? It will further send the request to DB and it will query the database. <coughs> so in this scenario, if you imagine, if I place all these VMs in 10.1.0.0 slash 16 on our open VPC, then what is the point of security? Then what's the point of security? Because the web servers must be accessible from internet and the logic is app servers should not accept any request from internet apart from web servers. And DB servers should not accept any request from web or anyone else except app server DB server should not respond to anyone. This is what the conditions I want to put in place. So if I if I put everything on an open network, how I will apply all these rules? It's highly impossible. So what I will do is I'll create a subnet web application and database. So we can further create a subnet based on your business requirement and I'll place the web servers here now. What I will do? I'll place the web server here. I'll place the application servers in a different subnet and I'll place the DB server in another subnet. So what happened? When the request came in from the internet, it will reach web server. If someone is trying to access the application server or application over the internet, this will be blocked because you are not allowed to access this application over the internet. And if someone is trying to access DB server or a database query, running a database query over the internet, it will be blocked because it, you are not authorized to contact this server over the internet or even if this web server is trying to access this db server it will be blocked and only if application server is trying to access this db server yes it will be allowed so if i want to place these kind of rules and regulations to manage my workloads within the vpc i i further need to what I can say I need to create further need to create the subnets to place the workloads in a secure manner. So how to create the subnets? Let's go back. Go to subnets create what I will link it. Just a second. ECS underscore VR underscore VPC one Score web subnet one under under which VPC as I said 
this is your VPC. So VPC one and this is your subnet one. What was the name I gave? give further naming convention so select and <coughs> you can mention in which availability zone you want to place your resources let me go back to the previous example so in this scenario this is the VPC and I'm trying to create a subnet when I'm trying to create a subnet I can create a subnet in such a way okay. subnet is threaded across all the zones okay Just creating one subnet. This is green one is imagine subnet. This is subnet HTS underscore PR underscore VPC one underscore web subnet one. Okay. So what happened if I set no preference? There is no preference zone imagine blue ones are zones these are the zones what is the zone name this is the zone name zone name one a one b and so on sorry one f these are the six zones you have within the VPC. Sorry, within the uh, region. So I have created a subnet within the VPC, but I'm I'm mentioning no preference, no preference. And what is the cider block? Ten dot one dot one dot zero slash twenty four. Create. Means in this subnet, your IP range starts from 10.1.1.0 slash 24. Means from where it will start. To 54. That's the total range for this VPC. Can I create one more subnet? For this sub can I create one more subnet yes I can create one more subnet just so this time what I will do I will restrict the subnet to one zone only this is again I call it as a subnet what is the difference between this subnet and this subnet if I place a devices on this subnet, they can go and deploy anywhere. Building 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, anywhere. But I am creating the one more subnet, the second one. What is the subnet name? ECUS underscore UPC1 underscore app subnet 2 this is subnet 2 but i am restricting the subnet to building 1 or availability zone 1 how to do that close create a new subnet underscore app subnet 2 under the same vpc but this time availability zone 
So understand the availability zone where the subnet will reside. Select no preference to let Amazon choose an availability zone for you. So this time I have decided I want to place all my app servers in this building. And what is IP range? 10 dot 1 dot 2 dot 0 slash 25. Possible? This is the whole range. Out of this, I have defined the subnet like this. Two subnets. Created and accepted as well. See the range? You get 123. Let me create one more subnet. VPC one underscore DB subnet three under the same VPC and add on another building ten dot one dot two dot zero slash Five slash twenty five overlapping slash twenty six also overlapping see accepting accepting because for subnet two. I gave slash 28 so it's slash 25 so how many IPs you get 10.1.2.0 to 10.1.2.0 so right One twenty eight till one twenty. That's the boundary. Slash twenty five around one twenty eight. So one twenty nine. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Let's see. It is creating. Okay, created. So from one twenty eight, you will get fifty nine IP addresses. This subnet three. This is how you will decide your IP ranges. Your your just go back. Your actual boundary is sixty-five thousand IP addresses, out of which you created three different you created three different subnets one subnet slash 24 another subnet slash 25 and another subnet slash 26 means in this subnet you want to place only around 60 devices in this subnet you are you are trying to place only around 120 devices and in this subnet you are trying to place on an average of 50. Right. what is the difference between these three subnets subnet is just a further logical boundary where you will place your similar kind of workloads and you need to 
calculate yourself or you need to plan in such a way that you won't waste the IPs unnecessarily. Because database servers, I'm 100% sure I'll not put more than 30. Then what I will do if I create a slash 24, I'll get a 254 IP addresses. I know 100% sure 30 servers I'll place into two to IP addresses. Let's say for example, because the clusters or three IP addresses. A cluster, node one, node two, and cluster IP. Three IP addresses. So I'll hardly use 90 IPs if, if even if it is a cluster. 90 IPs is gone. How many IPs you still left with? Around 150. So those 150 IPs will remain ideal for lifetime. You will not be able to use those IPs elsewhere. And you cannot put some of the workloads inside the DB server because security concern. So please be careful while defining the IP addresses for any of the customer for any of the purpose. Okay, so what's next? Subnets are done. So created the Bnet or it created the VPC and created the subnet and what is next? You need to create internet gateway. What is the purpose of internet gateway? What is the purpose of internet gateway? Uh, recollect the yesterday's class. Recollect the yesterday's class. Public private. So within the VPC, so far what we are creating are private. Now you want to access the same devices from your home or from your office or from remote location so you need a public ip or not you need a public ip right imagine this is your vpc in east us okay and i have a home and i'm connecting from my laptop. Okay, so if I'm if I want to connect to this server, which is VM one, I want to connect to this server. So how I will connect like this? Because what is the IP that I'm going to use? Let's say this is VM is placed in this subnet. So Linux server. I'll open this. Imagine 10.1.1.99 is the IP. Within this range, fine. 99 is the IP. You'll get a timeout because this is all private range. If you are inside the Azure Sorry, AWS data center. Then probably you can connect to that server or the private. But from my home, how I will connect? I have to depend on public IP. I need one public IP to connect with. Connect with that VM. So what happened? You need to have entry point you need to have one entry point in your VPC. entry point you call it as internet gateway so internet gateway is responsible to receive the request from internet forwarded to respective VPC. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the internet gateway. We 
c1 underscore internet gateway create so the internet gateway has been created but it is not attached to anyone so right click attach to some vpc so i want to attach to the existing vpc attach okay so now internet gateway is created and attached to your logical boundary so if someone is trying to access the someone is trying to access the workloads from anywhere across the globe those requests first hit the internet gateway once it reaches the internet gateway internet gateway must know where i should send this request okay for that i in the back end in the back end i have one two and three different subnets three different subnets within the vpc so i need to point i need to point all these subnets traffic to internet gateway this should send the traffic to internet gateway this should send the traffic to internet gateway and also this subnet also should send the traffic to internet gateway how to define that let's see so for that i need route table by default you'll get a default route table so i i want to i want to leave that route table let's create custom route table that is vpc1 underscore route table you are going to use under this vpc fine route table has been created vpc1 route table1 this so who will use this route table i'll say edit subnet associations all the subnets within the vpc must use this sub this route table save means all the three subnets within this vpc are using the same route table I have defined one route table and I will put some rules inside. What kind of rule? Routes, edit routes, add. So everything, everything is added to Internet Gateway. This is the Internet Gateway ID. Means Whatever the traffic from inside the VPC should go via Internet Gateway. This is what the rule means. No, no, no. How how we can say like that? N dot one dot one dot zero slash twenty four. Slash twenty four. What is this slash 24 the first subnet first subnet you want to use the internet gateway it will use something else what is this something else you have to decide so the something else you need to pick from here okay you can send it to anywhere we have multiple options we'll, we'll uh, discuss one, one one by one when we when we keep on building the scenarios okay so from this subnet you are going to restrict sending data to internet gateway and you are trying to send somewhere else you have to select where you want to send okay. so in, in in our basic example our first session let's start with everything i'll try to do internet gateway save what the route defines inside this vpc any traffic must hit internet gateway that's it okay and what else we have still have we covered so far 
the PC, subnet, round table, internet gateway. Here is only internet gateway. This is used for IPv6. We are not going to use it. DHCP option set. It is automatically created one DHCP option set. So whatever the VMs that you are going to place, they will <coughs> resolve under EC2 internal domain. That's the default domain. Elastic IPs means a public IP. We have to discuss further. And endpoints, NAT gateways, endpoint services, pairing connections, security groups, ACLs. We have a lot of stuff. Okay. So what I will do is I'll stop here till the routes. Okay. So far, what we discussed, let's recap quickly. Okay. We discussed VPC, subnets, internet gateway, around tables. We still need to discuss elastic IPs. Network. ACLs or security groups. Then so this will do it tomorrow. We covered this part. Okay, we still need to build a couple of scenarios on real time, how these VPCs can be designed and how you can how you can use them in your custom environments. Okay, first understand the basic structure and let's test this tomorrow and day after tomorrow we can discuss the uh, few scenarios on top of it. Fine, any questions? No question. Okay. Nagesh? You can unmute and talk. Fine. Not an issue. So let's stop here. We'll catch up tomorrow. Same time.